we want to be able to secure the life after sport for the athlete as well sport only exists or prospers as much as the athlete prospers hello everyone we have uh, rishabh jaiswal with us who is the founder and managing director of sporting ethos private limited and a, a newly added uh, venture uh, with him is uh, uh, athlete first foundation and uh, rishabh is also an iim ahmedabad alumni and uh, rishabh is actually in the sports ecosystem for uh, close to a decade i guess uh, right rishabh yes uh, yes i am thank you arshi thank you for having me so rishab i think uh, the name itself like athlete first foundation it uh, partly conveys what you uh, are doing uh, please help our audience our viewers understand the vision of uh, aff and you know what sort of change you guys are trying to bring here and um, honestly like what made you diversify from sporting ethos to uh, athlete first foundation right um so i think uh, athlete first has always been our motto i think ever since i stepped into the sports industry and whenever we work as a team at sporting ethos our motto or even the hashtags we've used all through has been athlete first and uh, when we were setting up a foundation we were lucky enough to get the same name so internally it does motivate us and you know it it rings a bell for all of us um the main aim of the foundation obviously is to as as the name suggests uh, keep the athlete as the highest priority because sport only exists or prospers as much as the athlete prospers and uh, the idea is to while supporting athletes also be able to tackle some of the challenges which are still there in the sporting industry and you know directly pertain to the athletes um the reason why uh, we've kind of also you know diversified in terms of having this initiative of athlete first from only working as sporting ethos and providing sports science solutions to athletes is that over the years we found that there are a lot of athletes who could not afford the kind of services we provide as sporting ethos because that also comes at a cost infrastructural cost the kind of experts we have and therefore you know we always had uh, you know this uh, this feeling that we were not able to reach out and do justice to a lot of talent out there i mean we were giving discounted solutions here and there but it was not a sustainable or a feasible uh, you know uh, model to do so So I think that is the main motive, uh, you know, behind setting up the foundation, where we can, uh, you know, uh, secure, uh, you know, the funds from the sponsors to the athletes, and we can then dedicate ourselves to providing them not only the sports science support, but the other support related to, you know, them doing well and performing at the highest level in sport. So if you can help us understand, like, how do you intend to focus on? other aspects of the growth of athlete because again fund obviously raising fund for the athletes via brands etc that is one part of it mm-hmm. but then you know how do you plan to utilize that fund or sponsorship in the growth of the athlete right so you know again i would say that the importance of sports science intervention cannot be you know over emphasized at any point of time because there are a lot of athletes and uh, you know sometimes they are not very aware of how an intervention would work so that is still remain a high priority but besides that i think what we are looking at as a long term goal from this program is that we want to be able to secure the life after sport for the athlete as well you know we see a lot of athletes who do well at the international level and you know kind of tapers off and they are not really sure in terms of which direction they are headed to as a second innings if you can call it and how financially secure they are let's say if i have to ask you for the understanding of our audience that uh, what will be the process or let's say how what is the process or what is the selection criteria of athletes when you pick up athletes so the, i'm sure there must be having some sort of protocol yes and we've thought long and hard about this again you know over the last 2 3 years as a team um, so we want to be able to back athletes obviously who have the right kind of skill set so that's why we're looking at athletes who have already they are doing well you know in this sport maybe at the national level or even you know to begin with their beginners at the international level because uh, right now talent scouting in terms of skill scouting is still a developing art and that's not our forte so we are picking up athletes who already have demonstrated a certain amount of skill set the other aspect we are looking at is uh, you know even now today we are just wrapping up the third round so we are already in the third round we got just to you know kind of go back a couple of steps we received over 500 applications uh we shortlisted 200 odd athletes who we interviewed from those applications 
and now there are around 80 85 athletes who are calling for physical fitness assessments which includes screening by the physiotherapist in terms of where they are in terms of injury levels or chances of injury happening and their physical fitness levels and the final round would include a an evaluation by a sports psychologist as well so the way we are selecting these athletes we are not only looking at their immediate potential but we want through our intervention of sports sciences and even the selection process we want to pick athletes who can do well for a longer period of time and that is what modern day sport is about when you talk about high performance in modern day sport it's not just about peaking for one year or two years it's about sustaining at that level for a long period of time yeah. enjoying yourself having good mental health physical health so that's the you know thought process and in terms of soft skills you know i mean in terms of my experience and what we've picked up we always like working with athletes who are very self aware that's something we were looking for in the interviews self awareness in terms of where their skill levels are where their physical levels are what they could do to improve and athletes who are quietly confident but also open to feedback from others where they can selectively take that feedback and keep improving so i think those are a couple of soft skills you know obviously we are looking for when we interact with them even now when they come for their physical assessments uh, etc so yeah I, i think what you are talking about is the longevity of the career right of the sports person and i'm i'm glad to see these numbers like 500 registrations so can you help our audience understand like uh, out of out of 500 let's say um, what is the age group you target or is there any gender or is there any particular sport which is like in your priority right so you know historically we worked a lot when at sporting it was with individual level athletes we were individuals from team sports come and train with us or come for their injuries etc um we were agnostic when we started off the selection process or even the application process to any sport everything has been done organically so it's through social media through certain coaches athletes well wishers people passionate about sport who just spread the word so we really didn't have a control over which category of sports you are reaching out to we just reaching out to everyone and anyone uh what how it has turned out this this time around is we have a lot of people from athletics both you know track and field uh we have a lot of people from boxing uh from taekwondo and then i would probably say archery and shooting uh but we do hope that in the you know next few batches to come uh we you know we will debrief after this whole selection process is done and we'll look at how we can uniformly reach out to a lot many more sports we did uh, get good interest from some new sports like climbing from ice hockey as well so i think one of our you know objectives going ahead would also to be able to encourage certain new sports which are coming into the fold the age group is uh, you know we are looking uh, at 15 to 24 max 25 age group that is where we can feel that we feel that we will still be able to contribute and mold them in terms of their approach etc 50% of the scholarships and this is very important and you know it comes from the fact that personally in my life uh, in professionally also the kind number of experts we have uh, it's a very uh, a female uh, expert and management driven organization and most of the athletes who you know done well under us and have been with us have been female athletes so we have been very clear from day one that 50% of all scholarships forever uh, would be you know awarded to female athletes as a part of the ultimate uh, selection criteria and interestingly uh, we've had some applications from para athletes also who've been shortlisted for round 3 as well uh, and you know we have some experience of working with para athletes so that is also very encouraging and we hope that we can reach out to many more sports and categories in the years to come so athlete first foundation is here to uh, bring a larger impact in the sports ecosystem of the country right and and supporting uh, athletes especially with the vision to support them even after their uh, career ends right playing career ends that's a, that demands a lot of you know commitment and obviously it also demands a lot of uh, flow of funds right so how how are you looking at like um, you know that 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 xyz has to be uh, raised in the form of sponsorship or csr or you know other verticals and and i'm sure there are uh, so many brands who are also understanding the power of sport and seeing sport as an agent of social change in the country right, right. so how how do you see things panning out on that aspect right so you know we've uh, we've got some very encouraging response from different organizations and some very unexpected ones uh where they're keen to work uh, you know in the field of sport uh what i tell them is that i think now with the efforts of the government as well as other organizations 
or most of the elite athletes you know who are already uh, you know qualifying for the olympics etc have some kind of support either from the top scheme or from kelo india or from uh, you know uh, even even uh, you know the other organizations but what i'm speaking with the sponsors is about uh, you know if they can involve themselves in the pre elite category because that's where uh, the same funds let's say you're putting in x amount of funds for one athlete you can utilize the same funds for 20 athletes at the pre elite level given that it's managed in a in a proper way so how we have segmented it is one is the sports science support one is the support related to their travel logistics accommodation kit uh, nutrition supplements health checkups and the third is some kind of a investment into their future so let's say uh, an insurance scheme which matures after 10 12 years so we've kind of done our research on what are some of the you know insurance schemes which are there and also uh, while we're interviewing the athletes we were trying to understand if like, someone was interested in painting someone was interested in languages so you know then we're trying to connect with partners who can help them with the vocational training aspect so in terms of the sponsorship ask that's how we are dividing uh, you know uh, these three categories and we are obviously keeping ranges because you know a, a sport might require a lot of equipment whereas some sports do not require so much of uh, you know uh, expensive equipment so there's a range which we are going with and then we have a total ballpark figure and the the, the way we are usually uh, you know talk, talking to sponsors is that if you are coming in you will be uh, you know working or supporting all the kitty athletes that is 10 for the full scholarship and 20 for the partial scholarship program so that then your investment also ha- can have a lot of impact uh, in you know for not just immediate this thing for the next 6 7 years and it's not just one or two athletes the same amount of funding can uh, you know support it's a group of 30 athletes which makes the chances of their support also you know much 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 higher yeah. i think it it looks more uh, like a very well designed holistic program for the growth and development for the sports person right yeah so rishab i'm uh, i'm i'm glad that we uh, something like athlete first foundation you are you know putting the pieces together and uh, which is for the development and growth of the sports person and so here if if i have to ask you right like in the sports ecosystem what you are building right now i'm sure the growth uh, has been divided into multiple phase right and you timing is also an important factor so if i have to ask you like um, what is the most uh, pressing challenge which you are facing right now to you know take aff to another level um i think the challenges occur at two levels one is the external level let's say you know in terms of the consistency of the support of organizations or sponsors i think that is going to be a challenge in terms of uh, you know how consistent they can be given the Uh, you know recent scenario of covid etc the csr funds etc have also you know been been fluctuating so uh, we definitely want to don't want to be entirely dependent on csr funds and that's why we have a uh, you know we have a private limited uh, you know company where wherein we can pitch in even now you know we'll be subsidizing the support to the athletes so we will be diversifying our the way in which these athletes can be supported uh, you know going ahead because so that suddenly you know we are supporting 100 athletes and the funds are not available so that's something we want to uh, you know uh, be be aware about uh, the second thing is internally you know there are challenges in terms of i think definitely uh, again the scientific approach i would say whether it's some of the policies uh, you know especially young athletes we see a lot of young athletes who are very talented i don't think there's any dearth of talent but a lot of burnout is happening by the time they are 15 16 17 because 10 11 year old you know players in certain racket sports are playing 30 40 hours a week and that's not sustainable uh, it impacts their health all of that so i think that is one problem and i think that would mostly come from a little bit from policy but mostly from uh working closely with the new generation of coaches uh helping them understand the scientific approach to grooming athletes and in fact that's something which we'll be working actively towards in the second year which we've already identified as an objective that coach awareness coach scholarships to help make the help them become very very aware about a scientific approach of grooming their talent because a lot of us including the parents of certain young athletes if they're doing very well get tempted to keep pushing them further to get that higher ranking at the age of 13 14 15 but if you look at the long term uh, you know a lot of them are getting burnt out not because they have to choose between academics or sport 
but because they are not able to sustain either through medic- uh, mental or physical burnout so i think that in in terms of the ecosystem is a big challenge which we you know aim to solve step by step uh, you know through the foundation and it's not i realize that we cannot do it alone i mean sport industry in india is all about collaboration i mean that's why you and i you know here and and we are talking uh, so the idea is to work together with other uh, you know stakeholders there are a lot of organizations doing very good work which also inspire us and i think collectively i think we'll have to make those steps in that direction well i'm glad that you uh, brought this up because somewhere in this race of winning medals we have to see that uh, we don't see athletes just as a machine to win medals right they are beyond that and their life is uh, beyond that thing Uh, so rishab thank you for joining us thank you for sharing these uh, you know valuable insights and athlete force foundation the work which you guys are doing is commendable so for all the viewers out there if you are an audience if you know anyone uh, any aspiring sports person who wants to get connected to uh, athlete force foundation i will drop um, a link on the description box below